Hi, I'm James McGuire, and our topic today is cloud computing, specifically the Microsoft Azure Stack Appliance. It's coming out later this year. To talk about that, I'm joined by Mike Schutz, a general manager of product marketing for the cloud and enterprise divisions at Microsoft. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? Hey, James. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. And I, and I know you are there in Redmond, of course, which makes perfect sense as you work at, at Microsoft. Absolutely. And, uh, it looks like a, a, a sunny day in Redmond. One in a million. <laughs> Great coffee, maybe not so much sunshine, yeah. Right. Um, the value of the Azure Stack, correct me if I'm wrong, is that it enables a, a, a business to run a version of the Azure platform in their own data center on servers they own and control. Uh, so in a sense, it's kind of a mirrored hybrid hybrid cloud approach, you know, marrying the, uh, the, the public and the private. Why, why, why would businesses want, want to do this? And why did Microsoft decide to do this in the first place? Well, absolutely, and you're, you're absolutely right in terms of what Azure Stack is. I think one of the things we're finding from customers is uh, that they're all really interested in adopting cloud computing. Uh, Gartner's predicting that this year the, the cloud computing market's going to almost be $250 billion, and that's up market. about $209 billion in 2016. Mm -hmm. And so hybrid is really top of mind for our enterprise customers. Uh, the reason for that is they have existing applications and infrastructure uh, that they need to keep going and keep moving as well as they need to op adopt the public cloud to get the benefits that the cloud brings of agility and cost savings. Um, and so uh, what we've been doing for a number of years because of our deep experience in the enterprise uh, as well as uh, all of our depth of investments in the public cloud uh, is we're trying to meet customers where they are. Uh, they're wanting to move to the cloud, but they also uh, would like to, in certain situations, bring cloud applications on premises. And that's, that's a fundamental element of where Azure Stack fits, uh, is we're making it, enable, uh, making it able for customers to deploy Azure services, the same services that were born in the cloud, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, um, and it, enable them to run it in their own environments. Uh, the reason why customers would want to do this is they may have situations like uh, disconnected or low bandwidth situations. So think about a factory floor or even a cruise ship uh, that, might be, uh, that might be traveling across the ocean over a satellite link. Um, they could build an application in the cloud for their broader organization um, and then reuse that application in these remote sites or in their own environment, effectively extending Azure right into their own environment. And so what we've really seen is the excitement since we've started to, and since we've announced Azure Stack, and it's really captured customers' imagination for all these really neat use cases for how they could take the innovation born in the cloud with Azure and bring it into their own environment. It, it sounds like it's its strong point, or one of its strongest points, is going to be for legacy applications, not so much, you know, something that's that's coded this particular year. Or is is it is it for the the greenfield application, so to speak, or is is it a stronger play for the the enterprise, the the legacy applications? The real value comes from in the area of application modernization. So every customer today has a, a set of legacy applications, but they're trying to modernize, and in many cases, bringing those to the cloud. Uh, what Azure Stack allows customers to do is modernize and build those applications in cloud native patterns using modern technologies like containers or microservices or platform as a service, um, and then run those applications on premises. And so if you contrast that with uh, other cloud providers who really don't have a hybrid cloud approach, um, this allows customers the flexibility to be able to run those new applications uh, anywhere they want to based on their own unique requirements or business needs. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, the idea of there's, there's in a sense a linked application between uh, the applications running locally and of course in the Azure cloud. How do you ensure that the linked versions don't get out of sync or a patch on one end causes a problem on the other or in the very unlikely event of an outage does that does that take down the other the other side or how, how would that work? Sure uh, so one of the scenarios that we we talk a lot about is is building the same application but running it in multiple locations. And so uh, a customer could run the same application in Azure and then run it in one of their own geographic data centers or maybe we don't have a data center. So think about uh, somewhere in Africa, uh, an organization running Azure Stack there. Um, so we have a connection 
um, but they're not dependent on one another. And so uh, if the if they had a power outage on in their Azure Stack environment, it wouldn't affect the public Azure uh, data center and vice versa. And so there, there really isn't an interdependence. Now, what we do want to do is help customers make sure that we're providing the latest innovation from Azure into their Azure Stack environment. So as we need develop new features in the public cloud, we will periodically make those available so customers can deploy them when they think feel the time is right in their own environment. And so we're probably going to do that two to three times a year. And so we'll provide the ability for them to update their systems two to three times per year. But none of those are dependent on uh, the public cloud availability or vice versa. It, it's almost, um, it's, it's, I guess you could view it as, as a backup service as well. I know this, the, the market, you know, disaster recovery is a service. It's a whole other market. Um, it seems like it may partially address that, or, or is that not what's really going on here? Well, you can certainly think about um, Azure Stack being an extension of Azure. Today, we, we have the broadest global footprint of Azure than any public cloud provider. We, we have announced 38 global regions throughout the world. That's more than AWS and Google combined. Um, and, and in addition, you could think about a customer having their own region in their own data center of Azure Stack. And so it certainly can be viewed as an extension uh, availability might be one benefit, but even just extending into new geographies or into scenarios where customers, either from regulatory or data sovereignty reasons, may not be able to move a particular application to the public cloud. Mm -hmm. What about the the pricing model? Does does the stack uh, does, does the Azure stack influence pricing at all? How, how does that go? Yeah, again, one of the the fundamental tenets that we're really trying to make Azure Stack uh, just be Azure. And so uh, even from a pricing perspective, and so just like cloud is pay as you go, uh, so is Azure Stack. And so a customer would procure the hardware from one of our hardware partners, HPE, Dell, Lenovo, and, and later Cisco. Um, but from a software perspective, um, you don't pay any upfront fees for the software. Uh, you only pay uh, based on the usage of the services that run on it. So whether that be virtual machines, or Azure application services. Uh, so just like the cloud, you have that economic model that is very much a consumption-based model, and we're extending that into Azure Stack as well. So it's a very innovative business model that you really don't see very often in on-premises software. And, and I know you, you mentioned the hardware. It will require hardware from either Dell, HPE, or Len Lenovo. I mean, what, what is the reason behind requiring the hardware? And, and, and will it at some point run on, on a white box software uh, server? Yeah, well, what we've uh, originally what we're doing is having HPE, Dell, Lenovo, and Cisco build these integrated systems. And, and as you probably know, the integrated systems or converged uh, systems market is growing tremendously. It's becoming the preferred way that organizations buy hardware solutions because it's been pre-validated and pre-tested. Mm -hmm. And so it really speeds the time to value. Um, and just like in the cloud, where, hard, where cloud providers like Microsoft or Google uh, or Amazon have a pretty standardized short list of hardware specs that we use, we felt it was best from a customer experience perspective and a reliability and performance standpoint to make sure that we engineered the software and the hardware together to make sure that we had the best possible experience for customers. Mm -hmm. And, and so w when do you expect uh, Azure Stack to be available? I'm sure that people have asked you all this time. We're going to make some news today. You're going to say the exact date, I'm thinking, today. <laughs> <laughs> people were very excited about it. You know, we just got past the third technical preview mm -hmm. uh, about a month ago, uh, and we're marching toward the general availability that will be starting uh, mid, mid this calendar year. And so our hardware partners uh, will start to release their integrated systems uh, uh, beginning in the middle of this calendar year. Which I, I'm going to I'm going to look at my calendar. Uh, those months to me that says July August ish. If I if I if I look at my am I I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the calendar, so I'm thinking mid year. You're kind of saying July August ish. We're kind of right in the middle of 2017. That's right. Yes. Um, so looking ahead, I mean, what 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 do you think of as as the future for Azure Stack? I mean, it's uh, if, you know, what will it look like? You know, one three five years out and. You know, what will be people be talking about when they talk about Azure Stack? Or actually, Azure, Azure Cloud in general, I mean, if even, even beyond the Stack Appliance. Absolutely. And again, like I think what we're trying to do is, is address customers' hybrid cloud needs. 
all up. And so when we talk to customers, and we recently did a survey of about 2,500 of our IT pros and IT decision makers, uh, customers worldwide, and they feel that that hybrid cloud for them is, 80% uh, of them in fact said that hybrid cloud is a durable model for them for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And now while the mix of applications might change from on-premises to public cloud, the need for having the combination of the two is highly durable. Um, and so we see certainly public cloud accelerating faster than any deployment model. And then customers having the flexibility to leverage those cloud skills with building and delivering applications on premises will continue to be really highly in demand uh, for the foreseeable future. So, so Microsoft clearly sees hi hybrid as a dominant model going forward. Absolutely, and we're hearing that from our customers. In fact, we in many ways believe that, that hybrid it could be the tipping point between the, where the real leaders in public cloud uh, differentiate. Mm -hmm. uh, and we certainly, uh, having been focused on hybrid from the beginning, we have about a seven year head start in hybrid cloud mm -hmm. and are building these hybrid capabilities across all of our products. Uh, Azure Stack's one great example, and it really does bring that to light, but we focus on uh, not just Azure Stack, but we've got areas in, the ter in terms of integrated management and security, mm -hmm. identity management, data platform. These are all really important areas where we're investing in hybrid cloud capabilities so that customers can uh, adopt the public cloud as fast as they want, but then also have the choice of when to keep things on premises. You know, Mike, I, I think you said it. It's a lot of good stuff. Is there anything you want to add about, uh, say, the future of the Azure cloud or, or, or what it might be look like, uh, you know, a few years from now? Well, I, th I think the, the main thing is that, you know, customers are really now seeing the real benefits of public cloud, and we see hybrid as an accelerator to that, uh, not, not deploying hybrid instead of public cloud. And so we feel that we're uh, meeting customers where they are, and we can really help them on that journey as they're kind of working toward digital transformation. Mike, I think you said it. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your expertise, and uh, I'll, I'll send you the link. We can, uh, we can all tweet it. Thank you very much. Thanks, James. Really appreciate it.